The Battle of Waterloo, held on June the 18th, 1815, remains one of the largest and the most important in European history, not only because almost 200,000 people participated in it, but also because it was the last defeat of French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte and the triumph of the coalition of monarchs led by Great Britain. It was the Battle of Waterloo that led to the establishment of the first movement of reenactors of historical battles, who regularly reproduced its main events wearing authentic costumes. And more recently, on June 15, 2019, an unprecedented thing happened. At the University of Glasgow in Scotland, 120 people and 22,435 miniature soldiers clashed in a battle of a huge field. It was not just a reenactment of the Battle of Waterloo, but also a war game in accordance with a clear set of rules. Fans of historical miniatures from around the world prepared the troops over a period of two years, a playing field with decorations of about 200 square meters and of course the tactics of attacks. As a result, most likely the biggest battle in the history of war games was played out over the course of two days. It played out according to a different scenario than the real one, but still ended in defeat for the French army. But it does not mean that 60 people will go home deeply upset. We enjoy the process itself more than a victory. We meet, decorate the table and making the beautiful terrain and arranging the army gives me even more pleasure. We gather at such events to socialize and victory is not that important for us. We just want to have a good time. Oleg Smorchkov is also enthusiastic about the period of the Napoleonic Wars, but is yet to participate in so-called large-scale international battles. He paints toy soldiers, creates the scenery and develops the war game and historical miniature movement in Ukraine, together with other like-minded people. Some of them do not play at all, but they make figures for themselves and for other collectors. I selected my topic, the history of Ukraine in the 17th century. All my figurines on Ukraine are made in line with historical documents going back to the 17th century. That is, we found some information on the Internet and in literature. All of this was transferred to the figurines. When did the movement of military historical miniatures originate? And how is it developing in modern-day Ukraine? How difficult is it to make and paint one soldier? And what rules of engagement should the armies follow? UATV is going to the battlefield, which is located on an ordinary desk. Miniature figures of clay soldiers were found back in Egyptian tombs. Apparently, they were used in rituals. The first prototype of the war game became an invention of new time in Europe. It appeared back in the 18th century, even Frederick the Great played toy soldiers. He modeled his future battles with the help of miniature soldiers. The first batches of tin toy soldiers were cast in Germany to honor the hobby of Frederick the Great. Military strategists and collectors followed this fashion, but there were no intelligible rules for battles. Although attempts to create a game that would look like chess were already made at that time. In 1913, the British science fiction writer Herbert Wells, the one who wrote The War of the Worlds, published a book called The Little Wars. In the book he wrote his system of rules based on the games with friends, which described the movement of soldiers across a voluminous battlefield and the interaction between them. This is what it is regarded as the beginning of the history of war games in the modern sense, but not just as a board game. The new sets of rules were developed and plastic toy soldiers were produced in the middle of the 20th century in the United Kingdom and United States. The Soviet Union produced few toy soldiers. Moreover, if it produced them, then they were positive characters, typical Soviet ones. Nobody produced toy soldiers who were enemies. It was scary to even imagine the making of a Waffen SS soldier in the Soviet Union. It was almost like treason. When we had craft lessons at primary school, we made figurines out of plasticine. I tried to do it and liked it. It lasted until I was 16. I made figures, animal figures and different devices at home. I made something like mini dioramas for myself. Both Oleg and Alexander returned to this hobby in independent Ukraine. In the early 2000s, they discovered the Internet and learned about all the wealth of the world of military historical miniatures. At that time, manufacturers offered figures of various scales for both war games and collecting. They were not cheap, so Alexander Batrak saw good prospects for developing his business. 
My first set was The Lord of the Rings. I made it with help of sculptors and molders. The fact is, this was 2002, when the first and second parts of The Lord of the Rings movie had already been shown in movie theaters. Unfortunately, my first project wasn't successful, so my sculptor friend suggested I produce souvenir figurines. After some time, I already had several souvenir sets. They are called Zaporizhian Cossacks. At around the same time, in the mid-2000s, Oleg Smorchkov joined the Kyiv club of wargaming fans. Watching large-scale battles abroad, collector players decided to arrange a reenactment of the Battle of Grunwald. It took place on July 15, 1415, when the Union of the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, which included the majority of Ukrainian lands, won a decisive victory over the army of the Teutonic Order. But when preparing for a battle, war game fans found that Western manufacturers lacked authentic figurines. They have a slightly specific perception and worldview about Eastern lands. I have in mind Kievan Rus and Ukraine. They have certain stereotypes. Their Cossacks of the 15th century and the late 18th century were identical. They do not differ from each other. So we had to sculpt other heads and the armor and attach them to already existing figurines. It could be actually called the original author's work only on the basis of the corporate frame. So I created the Cossacks cavalry set on the 17th century on the basis of the horse Tatar set. The war game includes small figurines up to 28 mm in height. The rules and decorations are adapted to this size. The Cossacks created by Alexander Batrak are 65 to 40 mm in height, and they are more suitable for collectors. I really liked the 40th scale, it's very convenient. They are not too small, they are more figurine, more than 40 mm. This is a pikeman, these are sets of Zaporizhian Cossacks with a cannon. Next to them a set of poles. Each figurine is the result of hard work by hand, without which a war game cannot exist, whether it is casting or painting, especially for UATV. Two different masters of military historical miniatures tell us how it's done. The path of each figurine by Alexander Batrak begins with historical research. This time he decided to make a figurine of a certain Zaporozhian colonel from the 17th century in miniature. Ivan Bohun is one of the most famous Zaporozhian Cossack personalities. He was a Cossack and a commander. Before starting work, I select my materials. I read about ammunition, clothes, the armor on horses and guns. I give the sculptor complete freedom in his work. I tell him what I want. One such sculptor usually creates master models for many fans of military historical miniatures. He uses a two-component epoxy paste as material, which has become the standard of model plasticine in recent decades. Alexander works with tin alloy at home at a temperature of over 200 degrees Celsius. I use a mixture of two metals. I take tin post 30 and mix it with a metal of better quality. It is also tin, but it is post 80 or post 90 tin. That is, by reducing the harmful content of lead, I leave only 40-50% of the lead in the figurine. Western castings, which are now sold in retail chains, contain post 30 tin. Roughly speaking, its lead content is 70%. Там идет э, по 30, то есть, грубо говоря, 70% свинца. Now people make figurines out of resin, but resin is even more harmful than tin and lead. You can cast a miniature weapon for a toy soldier and the toy soldier in the same mode. In this case, it's called a multiple mold. After the tin has cooled down, Alexander processes the figurine and removes the influx with the help of various drills, files, brushes, etc. The process for manufacturing the master model itself and the figures may take a month or month and a half. You start from scratch, from selecting the topic, making a master model, making a mold, cast, processing and painting. At the same time, Alexander does not paint the figurines. They suit the collection in this form. But if Oleg Smorchkov brings simple assembled metal toy soldiers to the war game, 
other players will give his army poorer characteristics. In such case, the community of war gamers encourages participants to paint the figurines. A professional historian is a member of our club. He helped a lot in making the reenactment of the Battle of Grunwald. On the basis of his works, he selected a coat of arms for us. It was only then that we painted them. The same applies to the colors of the uniform and ammunition, whether this is a metal or plastic figurine. First of all, you should cover its surface with a special coating based on paint and glue. It sets the basis color. If you paint so-called British toy soldiers, for example the army of the Napoleonic period, their uniforms are red, so you cover the figurines with red coating. This is the foundation. In order for the figurine to be voluminous, you should cover it with dark paint in the hollows and a light color on the flanges. In this case, the set will be used in the game. Oleg usually takes 10 to 20 figures and covers all of them at once with the base color. By the end of the process, the first one is drying out and is ready for painting. The master uses brushes. All these are typical of his goods. The effect of realism is achieved through various small tricks. You put the figure in the paint and squeeze out the water so it becomes dry. Sometimes I can make it a little lighter. In this case I take the same color as the base one and add a little white. You can do it in the high spot, especially if these are toys from the World War II, wearing a shabby service shirt. After that I take wash, special spills in order to get a better effect. If you use, for example, a red color and add red wash, then the paint is a little darker. Small details, which are especially numerous in equipping troops of the Napoleonic period, are painted at the end. I have game coloring. I think it is pretty good. It is good enough for the collection. When you have an army of the toy soldiers, you don't even see the minor defects. It is simply an embarrassment of riches. At present, Oleg Smorchkov has a set of Cossacks, toy soldiers of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, the British from the Napoleonic campaign, and German and Allied forces from the beginning of World War II. On this occasion, he decided to stage the game and the request of his son, who is fond of the the history of the battles of the German African Corps. He even created a special uniform for this occasion. We will play the initial period of the war in North America, 1940-1941. It is a small skirmish in one of the oases in Tunisia or in Libya. We will use a set of toy soldiers from the African Corps. The allies include a detachment of Australians and a detachment of New Zealanders. Oleg is more like a consultant on the rules, while his son and his friend are the players. He gave them instructions before the battle. The boat action system is usually used in such small battles on the topic of World War II. The player can choose certain soldiers to form his detachments, taking into account the number of points. The fight takes place in the scenery and their characteristics are taken into account in the calculations for the fights. In order for a sniper to shoot at the enemy, it is necessary to measure the distance between him and them in inches, take into account the type of rifle and even the possibility of firing at a defense building. For a hit to be registered, you must throw at least four points twice in a row. If the commander is killed, the morale of the soldiers falls and they can leave the battlefield. This is only a small part of the rules that enables us to reenact a battle. In the final battle, the parties exchange air and artillery strikes, and it finally becomes clear who the winner is. It's a beautiful game. The German Hauptmann commander charged and actually brought victory. German aviation also worked well, as was the case in reality. Although the New Zealanders and Australians were staunch troops, they could not do anything against blows from the sky and actually lost a mini-battle for this small oasis. Oleg Smorchkov hopes that the club of war gamers will finally get their own large room where they can leave toy soldiers and scenery on a permanent basis and hold regular large-scale battles, including battles from the history of Ukraine. Besides, masters like Alexander Batrak already create authentic figures that can become the foundation of miniature armies of the future.